Hello and welcome to the English 317 talk show being streamed live from different parts of Pusan, Korea on June 15th, 2014. I am Jeff Lebo and I am very, very fortunate to have some excellent and brave students who uh, are willing to do this for their final challenge in my course. And so tonight we're going to have a bunch of them presenting uh, discussion segments on different topics. Uh, and we begin tonight with Pak Eun-jong and Kim kyung Sun, who are going to speak to some of their friends about common problems that college kids here in uh, Korea might face. So I turn it over to you, kyung Sun and Eun-jong. Can you introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your segment? Hello, my name is Kyung Sun Kim. Today we are talk about travel concert. And we will consider in the guest is complex with the beauty. I'm sorry, okay. uh, what with beauty? Uh, like cosmetic or fashion. Okay, and you've lined up several guests. Can you can you introduce your first guest? So and please Hello. remember to keep the microphone as close as possible to your mouth. Hello, everybody. I'm Cream from Thailand. Nice to meet you guys. V thank you very much for joining us. Uh, can you tell us about your problem? Uh, I'm worrying about my nose. It's too big. Yeah. I would want to have a nose surgery. And what uh, makes you think that? Can you... So I, I, I just want to let you continue. You said you're, you're concerned about your nose. You want to have nose surgery. I'm confused. I don't understand why. Why would you want to have nose surgery? What made you think about this? My story is a little bit long. So I came to Korea this year and... I met the cute boy, and I think I fell in love with him. <laughs> so you're here as an exchange student. You yeah. met a cute a cute boy. He's from Korea. Yes. Yeah. And you fell in love with him. Uh, I think I just like him. Okay, you like him. <laughs> yeah. What does what does that have to do with your nose? Uh. I once told him that I like him, but, but he told me he doesn't like me. So I asked him why he didn't like me, and he said, my nose are too big. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to comment on this yet, but I, uh, I would love to hear your thoughts, your advice. Kyung mm -hmm. Sun and Eun Jung, anyone else in the hangout? She met a boy. He said she did not. He did not like her because her nose was too big. What do you think of that? I think he is a very bad boy, and I don't think she needs to have nose surgery because she has to meet a boy who can love her own way. And John? Uh, I agree, sir. I think rejecting her because of her nose is just the one, just one on one. He can reject her another excuse after her nose surgery or make up with her complex. So. What would you do, Unjung, if you met a very cute boy who you really liked, and he said, "Well, I like you, but your nose isn't right." <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's that's my first thought too. Is he's a jerk. Why would you want to date a guy who thinks that the shape of your nose is so important? So, Cream, help me understand. Why would you consider getting? Plastic surgery because some foolish boy thinks your nose is too big. I just lose my self esteem about my nose because of it. Do you have any like this? I feel like this is a little bit of a a, a Korean story. I don't know. Like 
I look at your nose cream, and of course I am a special case, but I think your nose is very, very small. Uh, uh, why, why, this just seems crazy to me. Does anyone else have any comments, anyone else in the Hangout or anyone else in the room? Any other thoughts about why this would happen? <laughs> All right, I, I guess not. Well, Cream, you've heard this advice. Most people think this guy is a jerk. <laughs> and if he doesn't like your nose, you should get rid of him. Yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, I will try not to contact him anymore. Okay. Uh, but here's the thing that she got her nose problem now. And Jungsan and I tried to fix or make a, put a makeup on her nose. You tried and to put makeup on her nose to change the way it looked? Mm -hmm. Surgery is the only way. Mm -hmm. Surgery is the only way. No, no. It's not the only way. Not the only way. And I still just don't understand what's wrong with your nose cream. I, I you know, when when I when I, I lived in Thailand for a year, and my nickname was P No. Uh, P <laughs> is a little bit like Opa, kind of older brother, I think, and Nok is a uh, bird. So I was Brother Bird, because I, I used to travel a lot. But also Pinoc, like Pinocchio. So mm -hmm. I, uh, I have a nose connection to Thailand. Um, all right, anything else we want to discuss related to Cream's problem? Professor? Yes? We prepared the makeup tutorial for her. OK, do it. Okay. <laughs> First, we need. Uh, uh, we prepare the makeup because we don't think she have to do surgery. <laughs> and uh, and she need makeup because she lose her self esteem. So we gonna. Tell her how to make of her nose. Okay. <laughs> First, she needs a broad color shadow. The shadow has to be darker than, than her skin tone and give your a uh, deeper. Dip my anger brush into eyeshadow and draw a line each side of her nose. <laughs> can you see? We can. Can you can you get a little closer so we can get a better look? <laughs> Draw a two line. Now she look for high nose, right? Don't you guys think that? <laughs> what, what, do, what do we think of her nose? We're higher. And anyone in the hangout have an opinion? <laughs> I think she's very pretty. <laughs> and I think her nose is very small but not big. And I want to, and I hope she has much confidence because she has very pretty face. I think so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments from the Hangout? I think she looked totally different 
our face. Right? <laughs> really, Wait, nice. really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it. Oh, no. I'm not sure. uh, nice. Nice job, though. Yeah, I honestly don't see any difference. I thought your nose was fine before. I think it's fine now. But if wearing makeup is is better than having plastic surgery, so do you um see fur? What's that? See fur. Her photo. No. Her photo. Fo okay. Okay. Let's see the photo. Oh, a little higher, please. Before. That's before. After. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, well, any other comments about Cream's nose? <laughs> All right, I know we're, you're speaking to two more people. Yes, we have two left. All right, and we have, we have lots of segments waiting, so let's move on to our next guest. Thank you very much, Cream. Wow. 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 <laughs> Next guest is Shin Yujin. <coughs> Hi, Yujin. Hello. Hello, Yujin. Please introduce yourself to our classmate. Hi, my name is Shin Yujin. So, what is your trouble concern? I have a boyfriend. When the fire. Um. Oh, wait, we, we, we lost your audio. Oh, wait, stop. We, uh, uh, Injong's phone got kicked out of the Hangout, so we're not hearing you. So please reconnect. While you're reconnecting, I wanted Heijong to do an audio check. Heijong, can you say hello? Heijong, we're not hearing you. Um, are, are you on a computer? Hey Jung, yes? No, you're on your phone? Computer? A phone. You're on a phone. Huh. But we still don't hear you. So try to figure that out. See if there's something. Check, check the Hangout. See if you can adjust that. Um, and we're still waiting for Unjung to join again. Uh, Dong Hyun has joined us. Did you want to say hello, Dong Hyun? We can check your audio. Hi. Okay, sound great. You got a headset. You're good to go. Uh, oh dear, Unjong is um, having trouble connecting apparently. So, Kyung Unjong, please keep trying to connect, but so that we can keep going. Kyung Sun, please. Um, right, let's see. Try Unjong one. Wow, Injung keeps coming and going. Hi. Wait, she's back. Hello, Injung. Well, can you okay. Continue? Please continue. So, what was your problem? Mm, I have a boyfriend. When the final exam is over, we are planning to go water park, but I'm worrying because I don't have any confidence on my body. I want to know how to lose my weight within a month. If I can't, I want to know how to cover my body complex. But I think she looks even good now. I don't think she needs any diet. No, I can't show you, but I have too much midsection. Essentially, I have gained too much weight in my midsection and leg quarter. <laughs> All right, J just to make sure I under... Uh, hey, Jung, I think we hear you now. Can you say hello? Oh, no, still not hearing you. We heard someone. Um, just so we understand the situation, uh, Eugen, uh, how long have you dated this boy, this young man? Two months. Two months. 
and you're going to a water park together, and you are going to wear a swimsuit, maybe a bikini, and you're concerned that you're not going to be... Oh, I'm sorry, we're getting some... Okay. Um, and you're concerned about your appearance. So what are your options? What is the advice from your friends? So we have two advice for her. First one is my advice. I want to I want her to do a banana diet. Banana diet is the banana has high dietary fiber, so before she eat the meal 30 minutes before her eat the meal, eat one banana, it will help her to feel more satisfied. So this is well, the one kind of solution. Mm. What's the other option? And mine is to put a makeup on her body. <laughs> put makeup on her body yes. at Do you know Ocean the World. Idol in Korea, K-pop singers put actually put the makeup on their body. To make them look thinner? Yes, or healthier. All right. Any any other suggestions or ideas from either of you or anyone in the hangout? I recommend exercising more and regularly. Well, she needs short. She needs instant effect. Really? She has only one week left. <laughs> only one week. <laughs> So I, I can't help but notice that so far both of these issues are involve what men think of women. And women are concerned about pleasing men with their appearance. I'm curious if any of the men in this discussion have any thoughts to share. Dong Hyun, Dong Yoon. Yeah. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am a man in this conversation, and I think it's a little bit, you know, you are who you are, and your nose looks like what your nose looks like, and your body is your body, and sometimes you can exercise more or eat differently or lose weight or gain weight. But if this is your boyfriend and he really likes you as much as you like him, why does it matter? You know, none of us are perfect. And even if you're perfect for a little while, you get old and you get less perfect. So part of me is a little concerned how women are so focused on looking the way men want them to look. Oh, Unjung, we lost you again. While Unjung is connecting, any other thoughts from the Hangout? Uh, hello? We hear you. That's Heijong, right? Yes. Yes. Talk to uh, us. <laughs> I think uh, Unjung's friend is too, uh, too much concerned about her body because, you know, by the look of it, by the look of it, I don't think she has that much of middle section as she referred to. But <laughs> uh, seriously, I think um, if she has that, if she shows the self confidence in front of his boy, uh, her boyfriend, or anybody, I think they would be more uh, prettier. It would look better to other mm -hmm. people, I think. That's what I think. I think that's an excellent point, Heijong. I think confidence in being comfortable with who you are is very sexy. <laughs> and professor, mm -hmm. can I add one thing? 
please. As in my opinion, the, if the if her boyfriend loves uh, her so much, I think he wouldn't care about his uh, her appearance not uh, much. I agree. If he's not happy with her appearance, then he can go to Ocean World with Cream's boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Cream and UJ can go have fun together. All right. Anything else we want to uh, discuss or say about Eugene? Okay. Eugene, what are you going to do? One week left. Banana diet. Diet. <laughs> ba banana diet? Yeah. All right. Well, bananas are good, so eat as many bananas as you want. But no matter what you look like, have fun at Ocean World. And if your boyfriend says anything bad about your body, Get rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You, Thank you very much, Eugene. Thank you. Thank you. And our final guest in our first segment. We saw the last guest. Okay. So, this is Sungha. Hello, Sungha. Hello, my name is Sungha. So tell us about your children. <laughs> I want, I want to be a groomy, but I don't know how to start and what to do. He said grooming. Grooming. Can you, grooming is a in general English a very general term. Can you tell us what you mean by grooming? So, so the word grooming here is a new phenomenon of appears among the Korea. So the guys who spend money generously on beauty products or fashions to make needle and trim and put a little makeup on themselves. So, all right, so in, in the Korean context, grooming is referring to, and I, I just want to mention, and people in the Hangout, we're getting some background noise, so if you're not in this segment, can you please mute, make sure you're muted so we don't get uh, too much background noise? Jiyeon, uh, I think especially, we're getting some noise from there. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're talking about men wearing makeup. What's, what's the problem? Tell us more. I don't know how to throw, how to throw up myself. Uh, actually, I didn't care about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry, you, you don't care about makeup. So why are you worried about makeup? Why? Uh, I have uh, I have one friend who couldn't throw up as me, but. One day, my friend started to groom me, and he got some uh, properties. Uh, now I envy him, and he <laughs> wants to be grooming and and get the last uh, properties thing. All right. What what's your advice for Sungha? Actually, uh, I saw one man at our school. And he was a grooming boy. He always put a BB cream at his face and draw eye line and put a shading, shading his nose. But his face and neck color was different. So I think that was really funny. And most of Korean girls could figure out what, whether the man put BB cream or not. So. I'm a kind of girl who doesn't like to meet a guy who put up makeup as a boyfriend. I'm just curious, like, what percentage of Korean college guys use makeup? Oh, What's your no, guess? A lot. Yes. Okay. Uh, did you have? I disagree with her. I disagree with her because no, their own problem and. So try to 
fixed daily. So good at good, I think. And but important, the key thing in here is too much is bad as too little. So I want to give advice that always keep the moderation. Like do not make differences in your face and neck. Uh, I see something in your hand, Unjung. Are you going to do a little makeover on yeah. Sunha? <laughs> so I prepared the men's BB cream here. All right, let's 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 see it. Are you going to do it to Sungha? <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, I got this from one senior who actually do the grooming himself. Okay, and let's let's. I, I know in Korea we call it grooming, but what how we would really describe it in English is put on makeup, is makeup. what we're talking about, right? Okay. All right. But I think the PB cream I brought is a little bit darker than his face. His one. And I'm sorry. Are you saying BB cream or beauty cream? BB. 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 What is BB for? <laughs> Does anyone we know what is like this? Content. Like this. Ah. Oh, see, he oh, has one too. And it's he called. He is grooming boy. He is a grooming boy. I guess so. But BB, what does BB stand for? May I say a thing? Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, BB stands for blemish barn. Blemish. Blemish barn. Barn. Oh. Bomb. Okay. Oh, blemish bomb. Blemish Got bomb. it. Yes. Thank you. Now I understand. So it's to hide your blemishes, your imperfections. And you're going to put it on Sung Ha now? Yep. And Kyung Sun, you sound like you have a lot of experience with this. What general wisdom do you have? What should we know about putting on BB cream? <laughs> <laughs> Why you think I know? Oh. All right, let's get a good look. How does it feel? Oh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you put makeup on yourself? <laughs> By yourself. Oh my sh Oh my god. Uh. Thank you. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything, anything else to share about Sungha? Any comments from the the hangout? Any thoughts on male makeup or anything else? He is awesome. He's Fashion awesome. Terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know? A fashion terrorist. Yeah. Is that like a fashionista? No. No? What is a fashion terrorist? Opposite terror? of fashionable. Aha. Uh -huh. Fashion terrorist. Sunga is fashion terrorist. <laughs> Look at his clothes. Very nice clothes. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I like blue. <laughs> wow. Wow. Sharp oh, pants. Let's let <laughs> His wow. shoes is orange too. <laughs> Great. <I don't> 
<laughs> All right. Well, uh, we have lots of segments to get to, so I want to move on. Do either of you have any final words on general advice for all your friends who are concerned about different parts of their appearance? Mm, I think having a problem at their appearance and natural things, but uh, whether you get the surgery or by putting on makeup, it's, it has the different consequences. All right. Well, thank you all very much for sharing your uh, problems and solutions and the issues that you're dealing with. Um, if you'd like to stay with the Hangout, please feel free. Unjong, you can disconnect your phone if you want. Uh, I have seen that we've gotten a few comments that I, I didn't notice during the first segment. People who are watching this, if it is Sunday night in Asia or uh, Europe, or Saturday after Sunday afternoon in Europe, then it is live. Uh, you can join the text chat at the address I just put onto the Google page, um, uh, buffseng317.blogspot.com. Uh, all right. Any? Uh, I want to welcome Ahyun. I just Hello. want to make sure. We, great, your audio is fine. Um, just a reminder that when your segment is not on, please mute your microphone. And then unmute at any time you want to chime in with questions or uh, comments. All right, next up we have kind of a related topic from Da Kyung and Song Eun. Can you please uh, introduce yourselves and tell us about your topic? Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. Good evening. Um, <laughs> yeah. Good evening. <laughs> why, why, why no one smiles? <laughs> 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 we, 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 they are so <laughs> serious. <laughs> uh, I'm glad to be here with you. <clears throat> and my name is Song Eun. And my name is Ta Kyung. Um, today we will discuss about gender difference. And of course, there are so many different aspects between them. Um, uh, and. Wait a Could second. you wait one second? Oh. <laughs> we prepared a picture related to it. So, Next. yeah. So uh, today we will talk about uh, how men and women deal with conflicts differently. So we prepared some questions. Uh, we want to discuss about it. And uh, can I ask you? Oh my God! No uh, one, no one replies. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So, uh, now you know what it's like for me when I ask a question in class and no one answers. No one answers. So the first question is: Who do you enjoy communicating with more, men or women? Can you say the reason too? Ahyun, uh, you're, you're smiling. What are you thinking? <laughs> well, but it depends on the person. But mostly, girls love to communicate with someone or everyone. Yes. Mm -hmm. But who do you prefer to communicate with? Do you prefer to communicate with men or women? It depends on person as well, I guess. If I like <laughs> it could be friends or family or whatever. But I don't care if I have really good emotion with someone. It doesn't matter for me. Thank you for your reply. <laughs> Is there any um, other other <laughs> opinions about it? Hey, John. Can I see some? Okay. <laughs> uh, maybe since I'm around many men in my family, I have two brothers mm -hmm. and my father. 
Um, I find it easier to speak with men. Oh. Uh, because I don't, when I speak, I don't put as much emotion in, you know, things like that like other girls do mm -hmm. when I speak. So I can more likely to relate to men. I, I agree that because I don't have any brothers, so I only have one sister. So I when I talk with boys, I'm very awkward. So I think, yeah, maybe it is um, relate who have uh, siblings or something. Right. <laughs> and um, then, then uh, how do you communicate differently with a man or a woman? Do you have any difference <laughs> in treating them, <laughs> men or women? Or women. No one, no one. Uh, can I say my opinion? Please, please. Uh, actually, uh, I treat uh, when I communicate with men. Uh, I really try to show good thing, only good things of me. <laughs> Yeah, especially as most women agree, uh, if the man uh, is the is the someone that I have a good feeling, <laughs> I really really want to try show my only only good good aspect of mine. <laughs> not not bad. <laughs> and I think most men agree with that. <laughs> and as you know, uh, in yeah, I can show my every aspect uh, to my girl, uh, to my friends, uh, especially I mean girls. My the same gender, yeah. So I think that's the difference. <laughs> what do you think of this? <laughs> I think it's the way you make your boyfriend. <gasps> hmm? Who Pardon was me? that? June? What was that? June? <laughs> or Hyomin, whoever that was. <laughs> I think it was so messed up to make the boyfriend. It's the way that you make your boyfriend? Uh, it, it was the way that someone made her boyfriend. Ah. <laughs> By only saying nice things to him? Yes. I'm I'm also wondering because we do have some people watching who are not from Korea and mm. this idea of communicating differently with men and women involves a very Korean concept called egyo. Can anyone uh -huh. please explain and demonstrate egyo? <laughs> <laughs> Professor <laughs> you can Have you heard that. about Have you heard about boing boing? <laughs> I have not. Please oh. do. That. <laughs> Hedong, you do it. Hedong, Hedong, you do it. Ah, uh, Hedong, okay. Hedong is very good at egg you. Oh. oh, I don't oh. want to. See. So I don't cute. Want to I don't want. <laughs> okay, so those are gestures, but but as a language teacher, I want to hear the language. Can you language. say, um, um, uh, uh. uh Jeff, or or or, 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 or whoever, how are you doing? Regular, and then Eggyo style. Dak Kyung and Song and since this is your your section, can you can you try that? I want to hear <laughs> how are you regular style and how are you Eggyo style. Uh, like, <laughs> oh, have fun, have. For, 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 well, take one, take two. First one, regular. Second one, regular style. Um, professor, I think it's a little bit difficult. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I, I don't want for any volunteers. Aikyun, I bet you can do it very well. 
Not for this time. Ah, all of a sudden, I, I walk around the, the halls of our campus and hear Eggyo nonstop, but have a hangout and I can't hear Eggyo. All right, well, we'll put a link in for our listeners. But just to explain, it's kind of a very cutesy style of talking. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, please continue. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> and in my opinion, the most women uh, do Eggyo when... <laughs> When they, they want, want something. something from men. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jeff, do you agree with that? <laughs> yes, and this is something we've talked about in classes a lot, that um, Asian men, or especially Korean men, sort of think of this as a positive, cute thing. Most Western men aren't don't really like it that much because they feel like it's a little bit manipulative that when women are speaking that way they're either trying to get something from them or they're trying to manipulate them or they're not being really genuine. Um, Thank you for your comment. <laughs> and, and the third thing that I pre we prepared the question uh, what annoys you most when you argue with the opposite gender? What annoys you most when you argue with the opposite gender? Yeah. What are your thoughts? Um, maybe um, uh, gesture or attitude for problems. I think when the when couple argument argument each other and uh, mostly the men are uh, the men are not taking the problem seriously just just my thought and mm -hmm. maybe the woman is angry about that because they don't um, respect them. So I think that is the most reason, one of the most reason that they are fight or something. <laughs> All right. song in any thoughts on that? And uh, in, my, in my case, uh, when I talk about something with my brother, uh, he always want to, want to solve the problem. <laughs> sort of the thing that I experience, but I don't want he, I just want he listen my problem and my worries, but uh, but he always says to me, oh, what's the conclusion? Oh, what's the problem? Oh, what's the, well, ca how can I solve the problem? So then I say, oh, no, <laughs> uh, you, you can't solve the problem, or I want you to just listen, but and I want you to share my feelings and uh, my emotions, but uh, but so I think that's the thing bothered when I have a conversation with my brother. And what do you think would bother men? And either you can answer, or we have a couple men in this conversation. Dong Hyun, Dong Yoon, any thoughts on <laughs> things that bother you when you are speaking with the opposite gender? Like phone call? Oh, How about phone call? Poker? Poker? Phone. Cell phone call. Uh, phone call. P H O N E. Phone call. What, what about it? <clears throat> My mic is not working. No, we. I, I hear you. I'm just not sure why do phone calls bother you. Uh, because. If oh. man called my phone at the times I said just just I just listen conclusion, but this woman is different because mm -hmm. woman is always uh, want to understand her mm -hmm. mind and therefore I can just wait and listen and I say conclusion. I say conclusion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you know. Sometimes it can Sometimes be a very can long be a journey. journey. <laughs> when a woman is telling a story, much longer than <laughs> the man was man. telling the story. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I all think right. all of men just like right. a short conversation. Mm -hmm. 
Do do we agree with that? That men prefer short conversations. I agree with that. Yes, one of my friends doesn't like to talk with girl a girl with his girlfriend on the phone too long. Yes. things. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. What about a group of men getting together and talking about the World Cup? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, any other thoughts on that? Anyone? Mm. All right. I know you have three yeah. more. Is that you, Hey John? Yeah. No, you're muted. Who is that speaking? Um, I know you have three more questions, but for the sake of time, I'm thinking maybe we take just one more question. Mm, okay. Uh, and we prepared the video of the funny thing, so maybe... Um, all right, if you want to play the video, I'm going to play the video. It's the only oh, way that okay. we can have it on the stream and people in the Hangout. So okay. I'm going to need to change some settings here for just a moment. Thank you. <laughs> Stand by. My audio might get a little weird here. See the walls. I hear you, Tadri. That is. Yeah, it's the second time this week. But you said it was fine. It is fine. It's perfectly fine. Are you confused by female behavior? Wish you had a translator to understand what she means. Well, you're in luck. Introducing the Manslater, a revolutionary device that translates woman language into simple man words. Finally, the pilot will know what she needs. Okay, so. Hey, babe, a tea time open up. Fine. No, go! Stay on! <laughs> I think I'll just stay here with you and watch the notebook. Aww, so sweet. Now that's more like it. The Manslater uses emotion deciphering technology to help you out of the toughest jam. Thanks to the Manslater's patented FemLogic processing chip, now any man can decode statements like, Are you wearing that? Okay, now. Hey, do you want to get some coffee? Do you want coffee? I'm fine. Just fine. <laughs> Be ready in 30 minutes. You whatever you want. You know do what you want. The man's later even works on men. Uh, okay, we prepare this video that uh, you agree with this video. <laughs> I think the the which one? Yeah. The woman said, "Okay, I need more five minutes," and that is mean I need more thirty minutes. Every every girl need many times when she make up or dressed up something. So how about you? You you said that your boyfriend or anyone? <laughs> so the point of this is that women are less direct than men and sometimes when they answer a question are not really saying what they're feeling. Yes. Would, you, would other women on this call agree? Ah, Hyun, Hye Jung, <laughs> Song Hyun. Yeah, we really agree with that, <laughs> and and we really agree with the uh, women. Fine, 
uh, it's didn't, not... didn't mean fine. <laughs> uh, doesn't mean fine. So, uh, because uh, most women tend to say uh, what they want very indirectly. <laughs> so, uh, men uh, should think about one more. <laughs> <laughs> One more, and so uh, I f I think the women need to say what they want uh, more yeah. directly, and because we are uh, the people are not God, <laughs> so I think the the thing is the important thing is that uh, people need to express their opinion or what they feel or uh, their emotion, what their emotion is, so. Uh, so expressing makes uh, expressing makes possible others uh, others understand mine and uh, we can also understand and share the feel about others. So I think the expression is very important in life. All right, very very nice <laughs> thoughts. Any anything else you want to say before we move on? Um, that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Chong and Song Eun. Please feel free to stick around if you like. We have a, another related topic coming up. Um, and I want to say hello to the people in our chat room, Maha and Elizabeth Ann, joining us from afar. Um, Maha and Elizabeth Ann, if, in the chat room, if you can let us know uh, where you're visiting from. That would be very nice to, to know about our global audience. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm just catching up on some chat. Dong Hyun, you want a man slater to uh, help better understand the women out there? I, uh, I think we all could use that sometimes. Um, all right, I want to move on to Hei Jung in just a moment. I just want to catch up to see if I've missed any other chats or messages. OK. All right, next up, Hei Jung. Please unmute yourself, introduce yourself, tell us about your segment. Hello everyone, my name is Hae Jung and <clears throat> today I want to talk about what causes stress and how people normally cope with stress and how I cope with my stress and my personal, um, uh, what is it, my personal experience of going through, going under stress. Okay? All right, sounds good. Um, recently, we, uh, we are doing this segment and hangout because we have our finals, and that is one of my big um, stress, uh, one of the reasons I have stress. Um, it's related to grades and my future. Um, and because I'm spending time on this, I don't, I cannot focus on other things as well. <laughs> uh, I did some research and uh, other people have the same feelings about grades, bills, there's not enough time to finish all tasks, careers and family responsibilities and all that. So uh, I would like uh, people's comments from uh, which we, what, what causes stress for them. And I, I'm curious, I mean you mentioned grades first and I, I think um, students around the world feel pressure about grades but I think there's something special about Korea or uh, certain countries like Korea where grade pressure is <laughs> extreme, um, or at least the pressure to, to do well on the entrance exam to get into university. How much has your stress changed? And for Korean high schoolers, the stress of the sunung, the entrance exam here, is enormous. Uh, has that stress continued into university, or is it a different kind of stress in university that you feel? Um, the, the, the answer could be, uh, the question would could be answered by some other Korean students because since I did not take Sunung test and I spent my high school years in Australia, um, I don't know what Sunung feels like. But since I came into Korean university and uh, 
became a body of Korean university student, I feel very, like, I feel late and I feel like I need to do more and my uh, grade will affect my career and it feels like it's more important here than when I was in Australia because they emphasize, they focus on it more. It's, it's, I'm not saying it's less important, but I think we're, in Korea, we're, we are thinking about it too much. Any, any other thoughts from anyone in the Hangout? Uh, I agree. Yeah, I really agree with her. And because uh, I wonder uh, the professor's opinion too, but um, in my opinion, Korea society, uh, this our society is very, very competitive. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, when we when we were high school student, we only we have to learn so many things. But I think, in my opinion, the school uh, and the teacher and the education system didn't taught, uh, didn't teach us the really important things in life and the really useful thing in life. So uh, I need to I I think the Korean education system and the whole uh, society system a little bit uh, need to be changed and I think uh, uh, the change sometimes uh, uh, most people agree uh, most people don't want change but because it's difficult and people are very accustomed to think that uh, uh, have been uh, sort of have been originally, but I think the change only makes uh, proceed, proceed and promote and progress. So I think the we our society need change. <laughs> All right, that's a lot of P's. Proceed, progress, something else. Uh, <laughs> All right. Any, any other thoughts? Hey, Jung. Any uh, any follow up on that um, or anything else? Yes, I I appreciate the comments and uh, it's I I feel like it's more common to ask from like as a um, parent. Um, did you study? Did how did it go? Um, did you finish your homework? It's it's easier. Like it's common for Korean parents to ask the, those kind of questions rather than did you eat and other you know mm -hmm. questions like that and because it's important to the parents and the teachers to see how the, the student and the child is progressing it's mm -hmm. that's why we feel as a child it's important and mm -hmm. we really need to get things done and I think um, do you think like, grades are really so important <laughs> do you think your life will be different if you graduate with a 4.0 average or a 3.8 average mm -hmm. will that change your life I did not think so so mm -hmm. I did not actually care about the average point but mm -hmm. since I'm now at the time to face you know, getting job and going into career. Mm -hmm. uh, I think 3.5, I, I should at least get 3.5. <laughs> and that is what the school is emphasizing on us, mm -hmm. too. That, <laughs> interesting, the school is emphasizing that you should get at least a 3.5, yet as a a professor at this school, I am required to give 30% of my students C's or C pluses. Mm -hmm. So it kind of sets up, and like, you know, I, to be honest, as, a, as a, a teacher here, it 
it hurts me sometimes that I have to follow that grade quota because I have students who absolutely do not deserve a C plus, but I'm mm. forced to give them a grade below what they deserve. And you know, as an educator, I'm much more concerned about are you learning what what is going to be helpful to you, and are you mm. learning to love learning, and mm. um, the number, the grade isn't a significant thing, but I, I certainly understand how students can become very focused and stressed on that. <laughs> but please continue. That was only just one among many sources and solutions <laughs> of stress, so please uh, continue the segment however you want, Heijong. Okay, and um, I've mentioned many sources of stress. I'm thinking maybe as a college student, not many friends are worried about bills as much and career like family responsibility but mm. I feel kinda I have to face all that and I have different stress mm. different causes like I have more responsibilities in my life because I have to pay my own bills and Yes, and I have short time and all. So I felt quite down about for about a week last week and this week. But because I did some research within this um, segment, <coughs> I felt better because um, there are many ways that we can um, manage our stress. Please help us. I was getting depressed with all these sources of stress. Okay. Um, before I did some research, I did drink. I, I cannot drink. I'm, a, I'm not a drinking person. Uh, but I did drink some beer, like a cup or two. And it made me feel better, like, for a short time. But, you know, after that, I just felt the same way. So... I did some research um, and they said it was better for me, like, it's healthier for us to go for a walk and adapt to, like, change our thoughts, basically. <laughs> like, um, we need to know our limits and stick to them and if some one or some things are making us um, perform over our limits. Um, we need to be able to say no because it will stress us if it stresses us too much. Would it I help think, anyone? I think, on I, I think that's a very significant point, being able to say no to all sorts of things. No to your friends when they want to do something but you don't want to. No to uh, pursuing, you know, I know a lot of people that pursue a certain job or a certain, you know, major because their parents tell them to. And I think if you're doing something that you don't want to be doing, that's a, a sure way to become stressed. Uh, and I did want to mention that concerning drinking, Dong Hyun is coming up with his segment on drinking, and he has done extensive research on this topic. So uh, stay tuned for that. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. And um, they say they uh, an uh, an article said uh, it's better for us to adapt to the stressor, which means uh, try to view stressful situations from more positive perspective, and take perspe perspective of a stressful situation and ask yourself how important it will be in a long time. Uh, it's it's not easy for us to do that, but it would. I'm trying to do it, and I think it does help a little bit. <laughs> it's better can, than. Can you give us an example of that? Like, um, I felt like I had no one to speak to about uh, about my situations. And it was a. I thought it was a bad kind of situation, but <coughs> looking at the bigger picture, like I, if I 
fault with a person and I have to still work with that person. I thought I was all right and I did not have to make up for what happened. But looking in the bigger picture, it's just a situation and it's just an event. So I kind of said sorry first and it all became all right. So we, I think I need a different view each time when something or someone is stressing you out uh, because I cannot be all right all the time. Do you understand? That you're not always right and not always perfect? Yes. And accepting that? And that my sense. negative thoughts are not the perfect thoughts. So stop. I stop believing my negative thoughts. What about thoughts. connecting this to the, our previous topic about gender issues? It has been my experience that sometimes when women are stressed, they want to talk about it in yes. great detail. And then they want to talk about it again in even greater detail with more passion. And then they talk about it again until they're swimming <laughs> in this sea of stress. And I want, as a guy, you know, we would play a video game. We would do something that does not involve our brain. We don't want to mm -hmm. talk about it. We sort of want to distract ourselves or maybe drink too much. And mm -hmm. not that that solves the problem, but I'm wondering if there's a special the way that women can deal with stress more successfully. I don't know if you or anyone else on the call has any thoughts about that. I think I would like to hand my mic over to someone, but I would like to say this quickly. Uh, I think women are keep talking about their issues because they're not satisfied with another person's reaction, maybe. Like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to say things and what kind of reaction saying. would help so if you you've had a really stressful thing and you want to talk about it and get some kind of reaction what reaction would soothe you would calm your stress like for me so I'm like oh I'm so stressed with this person and this person and that and this event and the person on the opposite side like person who I'm talking to could just say Oh, really? <gasps> oh, my. I mean, how could that happen? You know, that kind of reaction. But, like, all men want to fix our problem, and they want to say <laughs> something towards our problem. Like, oh, you should say sorry first, or you should not think about it. We know that. We want to move on ourselves, but, you know, what? we just don't want to hear that. <laughs> I see. That's That's too bad. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> other, other thoughts from anyone in the Hangout? Yeah, well, uh, professor? Yes. The, I think most, uh, most women can relieve their stress through having a conversation and I saw, uh, I saw good reaction is uh, is the thing that first as uh, say positively, mm. and as time goes by, as and later, uh, we should recommend uh, our advice and the bad things that uh, the the someone behaved also or someone did. Yeah, I thought that is a good reaction and good recommend uh, good advice uh, to people. <coughs> What do you think? <laughs> I, I, I want to share some comments from the chat room. Um, Elizabeth uh, Ann has commented to Heijong saying, I find that exceptional, seeing so clearly that the only thing you can change is the way you see the situation. It took Elizabeth Ann many years to appreciate that. So you're young and wise, Heijong. Uh, and Maha is saying that looking for empathy is not necessarily a fix. Uh, hey. Uh, Oh no, hey, we just lost Hei Jung. <laughs> no wait, Hei Jung, it says, Hei Jung, can you hear us? Uh, Hei Jung seems to, ha is having some phone issues. She's sending me on cacao. Um, Hei Jung, I don't know if you can hear us or not. 
Uh, I think what we'll do is get ready for our next segment. And hey, Jung, if you are able to rejoin us, uh, we can wrap things up then. Um, let me send her a message. All right, so hey, Jung, good luck. Find a phone charger, do what you need to do. Don't be stressed. And when you come back, you can talk as much as you want about the situation, and no one will try to fix it. Uh, okay, she's saying two minutes. Um, next up, we have drinking. So, uh, Dong Hyun, I'm wondering if you can maybe introduce yourself a little bit, talk about drinking, and then when Hei Jong is back, we'll, we'll let her finish things up and get back to your drinking. But first, tell us who you are, what your topic is, and why you chose that. Hi, I'm Dong Yan. Uh, today I'd like to talk about liquor uh, because uh, why I choose this topic is my topic is gender of drinking in Korea because uh, we know a lot of uh, we know um, drinking culture in America and on other countries, but uh, American people and another world people is never knows Korean culture and for now, I to hang out music music videos uh, like show that. Uh, Korean uh, drinking culture, but some of Americans and Western people is never understand why he drink so much, uh, too much. Yeah, today. Therefore, I choose this topic. Uh, and I'm I'm wondering if before you get into your topic, if you can talk a little bit about what Hei Jung was talking about with stress. What is your relationship to alcohol and stress? Do you drink more when you're stressed? Do you drink less than you're stressed? Does it help relieve your stress or add to your stress? I think drinking uh, really solved my stress, everything, uh, just at that time, just drinking time. But next day, I have more stress out. So at the time, you think it's going to work, but it doesn't really. Yeah. Okay. All right, go ahead. Tell us what you would like to about drinking. Okay, first, uh, you're going to watch uh, Sai's new music video. Yeah. Um, I feel like that video is not going to work especially well, so why don't we put a link into that video in the chat room, uh, and if people want to uh, um, watch that, they can. Um, and before we do that, Jung appears to be back. Uh, are you back, Hei Jung? I'm back, but my video may not be working. All right. Well, we don't have video, but we have your audio. So um, uh, let's go ahead and try to finish up your segment. I was asking in your absence about Dong Hyun and stress, and he does drink to try to relieve his stress, but uh, it doesn't always work. So um, what else did you want to uh, share concerning your segment? Is there anything you'd like um, to wrap up with? Uh, so l lastly, I would like to say uh, there is no size that fits for all. There is a saying. Uh, there are many ways to relieve stress. Um, communication is one way. Uh, drinking is a way. Um, exercising is definitely a way. So I wish everyone, if anyone gets stressed, everyone can find their own ways to relieve and be happy. And I just have to ask you, how stressful was this final challenge in my course? Uh, did it cause you stress and how did you deal with it? Uh, it did not cause me that big stress because actually it helped me um, sort out some, some issues in my life. <laughs> um, so uh, it, it wasn't a stress at all. All right, I'm very glad to hear that. Uh, please feel free to stick around, and maybe we can get your video back if you would like. Uh, in the meantime, we are going to move on to Dong Hyun's segment. Uh, the Hangover video, let me grab that URL. Where is your... Give me a second to pull this up. Ah, and... I'm sorry, I should have been doing this in the text chat. For people who are listening, uh, I'm putting a link to Dong Hyun's blog uh, post about drinking. 
Uh, and we don't have a link to the Hangover video. Hangover, the video is Sai, who is world famous for the Gangnam style horsey dance video, uh, has his most recent is uh, Hangover. And uh, rather than watch it, can you describe it for us, Dong Hyun? What's featured in this video and what, what does it show about Korean drinking style? Uh, it's vomit and uh, combination liquor and in like a soju plus beer uh, we call it some and um, never stop drinking. I, I think that's a pretty fair assessment of Korean drinking style. It's usually pretty extreme. There's, or it's, it's common for people to drink a lot. Uh, and it's very common for people to work sometimes and go to work at 7 a.m. the next morning um, with a hangover. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Uh, and you mentioned SOMAC. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about these? Do you have any photos prepared, Dong Hyun? Yeah, I prepared, but how can I use them? Um, are they on your Google document? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yes. Um, I, are they on your computer? Like, do you have the files ready on your computer? No. No? Okay, well, yeah. we have... Well, again, describe it. Soju is what? Mekju is what? And what is Somac? Okay, Soju is the one of the best, stronger liquor in Korea. Uh, out of Koreans like uh, soju and beer is you already know uh, beer is one of best uh, uh, liquor in the world but yeah this is Somek and uh, Jeff has showed that uh, we can just uh, you can see that a small glass uh, this is soju glass uh, and we can put it uh, put it as uh, soju and uh, we can just put into this long glass and we can just mix beer with mix beer and it called the SOMAC. Yes. And this how long has SOMAC been around? Like soju soju is about a twenty percent alcohol uh, beer is beer. And so it's very, very common cool. to drop the soju in the beer and drink that. It makes it of course stronger beer. And there's all sorts of fancy ways of, of doing all that. <laughs> Uh, not fancy. <laughs> uh, but I like sumac and all of Koreans just like sumac because Koreans must always want to uh, get a uh, happy atmosphere and sumac make us really happy. Therefore we always just drink uh, sumac and because we are very drunken um, rapidly. Is your experience that drinking a lot and SOMAC is kind of a way to get very drunk very quickly. Is it always happy? Or do sometimes stresses come out or fights happen? Do unpleasant <laughs> things happen? 90% um, yes, make a feel happy. But 10% is awful because uh, when I was high school student at the time, yeah, I, can, I couldn't drink, but I, dr I drink. I drank, but at the times we drank so much uh, with my friend, and but we met some bad guys, and we we fought them, and we 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 went to police station. Uh, so that that was not yeah. happy. Yeah, that was, at the time it's not happy. Yeah. All right. Did anyone else here have any thoughts on drinking the drinking culture of Korea? Poor Song Eun, I know, is not a huge drinker. I don't think she does a lot of SOMAC. Yes. Yes, I, I can. I couldn't drink much. <laughs> Me too. That's right. Both of you, Dong Yoon yeah. and, and Song Eun. I didn't say. Because we should mention this, about 30% of Koreans do not have the enzyme required to digest alcohol. And so oh. people like Song Eun and Dong Yoon, when they drink, get very red all over uh, and basically are allergic to alcohol. Like the mom. Yeah. 
don't but Dong Dong Hyun is not one of those thirty percent. Um, nice. I, I'm jealous of him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dong Hyun, please continue. Okay. Uh, Ed, but uh, I want to say something. Uh, soju is very cheap. Therefore, it's Korean people like soju. And I want to say is the second question is uh, uh, we can drink uh, drinking food. How do you think about drinking food? It's actually it's men doesn't matter drinking food. In my case, uh, is kimchi. Do you know kimchi? Can you explain what kimchi is for people uh, who might not know? Uh, kimchi is a Korean one of the best side dish. It, this is uh, very spicy for uh, Western people, but in, but I'm not. And Michelle Obama like this. Yeah, this is kimchi. Yeah, if kimchi is, is there, I can drink a lot, but humans is not. Humans always want to drink uh, chicken with uh, with chicken and delicious food. Like, uh, I, I don't understand why they always spend a lot of money for food, even drinking. And, and we should that in Korean culture it's very strange to just drink alcohol that whatever you drink usually comes with some kind of side dish called anju and drinking different things and usually involve eating different foods um, but what you're saying wh what is the gender difference of what Korean women and Korean men like to eat with their their food okay so with their alcohol okay if the soju is there at the time we just Man, men's men's case, uh, just kimchi is there. Uh, we can drink with soju, and any kind of liquor is possible. But women, if kimchi is here, it's nothing. It's kimchi, kimchi is just kimchi. It's not with liquor, not drinking. All right, we we have a number of women on the call. I'd love to hear their opinions. Do you agree with Dong Hyun that men, all they need is kimchi and they can drink whatever, but that women insist on more uh, complicated side dishes with their drinking? Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, always. <laughs> I know always. you agree with yourself. I'm wondering about Ahyun or Heijong or Jiun or Hyomin, Songun. Because uh, when I visited when I... this pub with women, women. at the time, I spent I just, just for food. What? Just I want drinking, but I spend a lot of money just for food. It's really awkward. Ah, so when you go drinking with women, you feel obligated to buy lots of food, whereas yeah. if you're drinking with just guys, you focus on the alcohol. Uh, women, who, I think Jian or Ahyun have something to say. Uh, it really depends on uh, how strong drinker you are. So a strong drinker don't need a, a side dish, just you know alcohol. But if weak weak person, weak drinker, they need something to eat to deserve all the alcohol. So I think you are wrong, <laughs> I guess. All right, disagreement. Disagreement. No. <laughs> right. Almost always find it delicious food. Like a hyena. Like a hyena. 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 What is that? <laughs> Uh, uh, wait, uh, uh, hyena, like, uh, always find this delicious food and just steal the, uh, food for farm, um, lion and kind of animal. Women also, with men, men always just get the uh, liquor, liquor, but women always get it delicious food. At sometimes I want to eat delicious food, but I can't eat very much. We, we, we have a question from Maha in Egypt. Do men drink more than women, or is it equal? Uh, it depends on. Uh, if women... It's ten, I think 10% women is very stronger than men. But it's nine percent humans never do that. Not eager. 
Any other thoughts from people in the Hangout? And interesting, um, Elizabeth Ann is saying that in England, uh, and to a lesser extent France, when young people go out drinking, they rarely eat just sort of small snacks like peanuts or chips or crisps. So it's, it's a very, it's a very uh, different and very kind of ritualized drinking culture um, in Korea. Not only what you drink and what you eat with it, but the style. Anything you want to talk about, Dong Hyun, as far as the style of drinking, as far as pouring your own alcohol, things like that. The way you pour differently if you're drinking with someone older or younger. Mm, we have some different style. Uh, if I met, if I meet uh, old man at the times, I never drink so much, that too much, because uh, in Korean cultures, uh, is never drunk um, uh, in front of old men, yeah, old genders. Yeah, so it is not, yeah, it's not polite to get too drunk in front of older people. And what if, let's say, you and I are drinking, and I am an old man, and you have your glass of soju in front of you, how would you drink it? Can you demonstrate? Imagine you have a, a glass of, of soju in your hand. How would you drink it? Okay, uh, wait. Uh, this is... Plus, is if old man gives soju, I just get is my hand is like do this, and I get is soju is enough, okay. I just I drink is turned my head and just drink, and just clean the this part uh, glass and just give old man and I just put soju. Yeah, like TV. This is Korean culture. Right, which is, is very different. A, you never pour your own alcohol for yourself. You always pour it to someone else. Depending on the age gap, you might pour with one hand. You might pour with two hands. And um, uh, when you drink your soju, if someone is older, you never drink face-to-face. -face. You drink yeah, just to the side. This is, is quite a glass of soju, by the way. <laughs> All right, Dong Hyun, let's uh, wrap things up. What else do you want to discuss about drinking in Korea? Uh, what did you say? Uh, what else do you want to discuss about drinking in Korea? Uh, it's nothing. It's okay. no more. I'm just shy. All right, any f other comments from anyone in the Hangout? All right, thank you, Dong Hyun. We are running late, so let us move on. Uh, next on our agenda is uh, Jin Young, but I don't believe she is in the Hangout with us. So, Jin Young, let us know what's going on. Actually, let me check some of my messages. And no, nope, no message from Jin Young. So, uh, let us skip ahead to I know some people's favorite topic, and this is coming to us from Ah Hyun. Uh, ah Hyun, can you please introduce yourself and tell us about your topic? And you're, you're muted, so we're not hearing you. Somehow you need to, we don't get your audio. Hmm. Um, if in, in the Hangout, can you, I don't think you're muted. I don't know why we're not hearing you. Um, Ahyan, well, you know what I suggest, Ahyan? Maybe leave the Hangout and come right back, and maybe that will take care of the problem. And while you're doing that, Dong Hyun, we had one more question from the chat room, which was, do you talk to your parents about drinking? Do they know all about your drinking habits? Uh, just talk with my parents? With about drinking? Drink no, about drinking. Do they about know drinking? how much you drink, how often you drink? Maybe they are not. <laughs> Uh, but my parents is not strong, but is my mother's is strong. Uh, but sometimes I said I drink too much, but never just talk about just drinking. Sometimes, just sometimes, just sometimes, sometimes just my mother just say just drink just a little. If Do they knew how, if they knew how much you drank and how often you drank, 
would they be upset? Maybe they are not upset because my parents uh, keep up my lifestyle. They they drink also. Sometimes, but my father's kids drink drinking, but my mother's always drinking with me. me uh, sometimes my mother's and I just drink with. Uh, and yeah, just drink. And, and to answer, Ma is also asking, is it an acceptable habit or considered a bad one? I'd say compared to a lot of other places, it's a pretty acceptable habit. Drinking is, my impression in Korea, is that it's uh, common and pretty accepted. All right, thank you for that follow-up question, Donghyun. Ahyun, can we hear you? Yeah, of course. Can I? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. So please introduce you yourself. Me? Yes, we can see you. We can hear you. <laughs> all right. Uh, so all right, I'll start. Before I start, I want to say I'm really nervous. Um, hello, well, I'm Ahyun. Yeah, it, you can. I, so. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to say I've done some special research on your topic in recent days. So I. I'm prepared to contribute to your topic. Anyway, please right, continue. Um, I'm Ayan Kim for today's Hello Show. <laughs> so I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going uh, will to... I will going to talk about, about foods. Uh, there are so many foods in this world. And I want to talk about especially dessert. At first, um, I usually enjoy dessert as like some cakes or chocolate or bread or ice cream, like that kinds of thing. And when I got stressful about for some situation or some task or some bad things, I always had uh, that kinds of dessert. So that makes me feel better. As like alcohol so <laughs> yeah I usually when I had bad emotion or feeling bad I just use had a that kind of dessert so but um, chocolate or other sweet stuff like candy that is kind of common so I want to introduce some traditional Korean dessert because um, I heard this would be online in all of the world, so <laughs> so like except Koreans, like I want to introduce some kind of new dessert about Korean traditional. So I had some pictures of our traditional dessert. Where can we find these pictures? Uh, I will show the pictures now on my okay. computer. I will show you. Okay. Yeah. As like this. We call this dessert is popping soup. And it made with some really sliced ice and some uh, red beans on it and some rice cakes on top of it. So we, yeah, and it's really cool and it made of ice. So usually uh, during the summer, we ate a lot of this kind of dessert. Um, as like this. This is kind of green tea popping soup. Yeah, and what, what I was going to say is that, um, you know, the first picture you showed is sort of traditional pot being soup. It's just a bowl of shaved yeah. ice with some red beans and maybe a little bit of fruit and rice cake. The dog, I don't, I haven't, I haven't experienced that very <laughs> often. But what I experienced recently, I went to a Korean dessert cafe. And this is some really advanced, fancy papingsu. This was beautiful. Mango and cheesecake papingsu and uh, yeah. berry papingsu. There's some yeah. very fancy papingsu out there. 
strawberry topping soup in here. So it, I had that one, but it was too many strawberries. So it feels like I just ate sp strawberry, not kind of ice thing. What's your favorite uh, popping soup? Maybe mango popping soup, I guess. Yeah, I, I do love food. And usually during the summer, when I got hot, about the weather, weather, I always trying to get this popping suit. The I like one in one day. Wow, you eat a popping suit a day. Yeah. And I have to say, it really is a great summer dessert. Like mo many Westerners, when they first come here, are surprised and puzzled by it. Especially when they see the red beans, they think it's going to be chocolate, and it's not chocolate, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not. Uh, yeah, it's not Sometimes a little bit of sugar is added, but it's not especially sweet. But it is a really very cooling dessert, especially in the summer. Yeah, yeah. So we all of Koreans like, yeah. Most of guys and girls would like to eat or have popping soup in the summer, in one day, like if they get hot. Yes, and I'm gonna show some pictures here of some fancy popping soup. Uh, yes. So here you have berry popping su, mango yeah. cheesecake. <laughs> and so underneath all of this is this foundation of shaved ice. So as it melts, it kind of all gets mixed in together and it's it's quite nice. It all is. Right. And we have some various kind of that kinds of pingsu in everywhere, in every cafe or in every street or everywhere in Korea. All right, and we are making people hungry. Several of our watchers have not uh, had lunch yet, so they may skip straight to dessert. Oh, the, really? No, I have some more. Okay, okay, there's more. There's about, more. Not, not about popping su. Okay, what's uh, next? This is Korean traditional rice cake. Yeah, it's uh, it's made of from rice, and we usually enjoy this as like snack. But it would be more for full. Uh, Compared to snack or just chocolate, that kind more, of thing. more filling. Because like if you eat this, you would it would be more filling than cool. eating. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and most of adults in Korea like it than young generation. Oh, that's true. Your generation is not as big a fans of dok as your parents. Yeah, it's not. Like, my parents love, love rice cakes, rice but, cake, but I do like do some like of some rice cakes. Cake. So, it would be a little bit different, but it's traditional Korean dessert. And, like, it's kind of unusual for another world. So, I wanted to introduce about this. And other... Dessert is like cakes as like that. Like okay. Korean cake is really fancy. Like this is cookies. And as like this, you can see it's it's really true picture of Seoul in as like most of cafe or traditional shop for dessert. You can see a lot of colors on it and a lot of fruits. As you like know, this. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting. I never thought about this, but like my experience is Korean cakes are really sweet. They've got a lot really of frosting, sweet. they've got fruit, they've got added sugar. Cakes here are sweet. But other desserts are not so sweet. So I guess they just focus all that sweetness on cake. Yeah. Because cake is sweet, isn't it? 
Um, some cakes are sweeter than others. I mean, you can make, you know, a gingerbread cake or well, carrot uh, cake's a little bit sweet. But but Korean cakes, not only are they they sweet, but they're very. The appearance is very impressive. It's got lots of decorations. It's rare to find just a simple chocolate cake here. You get yeah, lots of decoration. The, of course, the taste is most important, but. Uh, most of girls love to enjoy their pictures <laughs> of their dessert for using uh, for using pictures on Facebook or Instagram, that kinds of thing. That's so, a really good point, and I'm curious since we have an international audience. Like in my Facebook feed, I get yeah. so many pictures of what everybody had for lunch and especially desserts and things like that. I'm wondering if it's as common elsewhere. I know. So that is most kind of important reason for they always looking for some that kinds of beautiful cakes. Um, and I do love fruits, but actually I don't buy any fruits for it, like just for food, fruits. But like if they had a uh, really nice fruits on cakes, girls just follow there. So that would be main. So you're, yeah. you're saying you, you don't buy a lot of fruit yourself. Yeah. But if there's fruit on cake, then you really <laughs> like that cake. Yeah. Wow. Because traditionally fruit is often served as dessert here, yes? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. A lot of times it'll bring a tray of apples or pears. And I should also mention Fruit are really expensive here, at least compared to America. I mean, a watermelon is usually about twenty dollars. Apples can be more than a dollar and a half each. So my experience has been that fruit are pretty expensive here. Mm, but I never saw that cheap fruit, so I just get used about price mm. of fruits in Korea. So if they have fruits and cakes together, it's wonderful for girls. And it would be strawberries or grapefruit or apples, mango or grape. I'm curious, since we were talking about gender differences before, you're talking a lot about what women like for dessert. What about men? What are men's favorite desserts here? I got, uh, well, I had some information about that, but... Some guys didn't like sweet things that much as like chocolates or chocolate cakes or cheesecake, all of sweet things, but some guys liked it. So it's kind of half-half. And Maha asks a very interesting question. I'd, I'd be curious about your answer. Are Koreans yeah. into trying other cuisines or do they prefer their own? So do you like trying foods from other countries or do you prefer Korean style foods and desserts? Well, I love foods, all of foods and drink, drinks, and so I, yeah, I would love to try. What but about compared? Me, what about compared to your parents or grandparents? Do you try a lot more international food than your parents or grandparents yeah, do? Well, I guess so. Um, like for America, the major food is kind of bread or meat or French fries, that kinds of. Thing. But in Korea, our major food is rice. So as like as I said, the rice cakes made of rice, right? So I do like rice as well, but I do love bread as well. <laughs> so yeah, it doesn't that matter if it is delicious for me. So I yeah I will I lovely to trying it. Okay, did you bring anything for us to try? I'm getting very hungry. I'd, I'd like some nice dessert, please. Uh, well, I have this kind of dessert now. It's candy. Ah, it's... can you open that up? Let's see what's in there. Ah, is it sweet? Yeah, it's sweet and tastes like lemon, orange, and raspberries, maybe. I would love to give you, but I please. I'll, I'll take one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, anything else you want to tell us about dessert? Uh, well, my dessert party is over, and I just want to say, like, 
we have various dessert of like and of with fruits or with a lot of sweet stuff and very beautiful shape. And I when I got stressful, I just ate chocolate, a bunch of chocolate with cakes and with breads. And we have some kind of really a lot of uh, chocolate with bread or chocolate with cakes or hmm, chocolate with popping soup even. <laughs> So, you know, yeah. that is something I've not had. Chocolate pot bingsu. I would like to try that. That seems promising. And, and Elizabeth Ann is also asking about, um, uh, and you kind of addressed this, that women do prefer sweet things more than men because they're saying yeah. that in, like, her husband is, has a sweet tooth, her bro someone else's brother, but you're saying in Korea women prefer sweet things more than men. Mm, I guess so, but not, I'm, I mean, not all of men, you know. So I... I, I said I mentioned half up. <laughs> it depends on the person, but I never saw who don't like sweets in girls. Never. Yeah. And speaking of chocolate, I, I did read to tie this into another topic that chocolate, especially dark chocolate, helps reduce stress. So that could have been yeah. another solution for Heijong is to eat more dark chocolate. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Ahyun. Anything else you wanted to say? Uh, well, I no. <laughs> okay. I just finished it. You've you've left the, you've left us all hungry and ready for dessert, but we can't rest yet. We have more segments ahead. Uh, still no sign of Jinyoung, so we're gonna proceed to K-pop time. Wow. Wow. wow! It is K-pop time. Get us moving, and I think this is gonna involve a dance okay. performance. We've been waiting for a long time. We're waiting a long time. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bit, a bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be yeah. tired. You've, not, you've got a performance to do. So yeah. please introduce yourselves. Tell us about your topic. Topic, yeah, okay. Hello, I'm Sangeun and Dong -yun. this is Dong -yun. Uh We are talking about K-pop. We choose the topic about K-pop because we are interested in K-pop and K-pop songs. Um, actually, I don't I don't have any knowledge for of music or pops, but K-pop is uh, pretty easy for me. I get to know the songs and oh. <laughs> But, but just can you can you start by defining what is K-pop? What does that mean, K-pop? What is K-pop? Yeah. What is yeah. K-pop mm, is um, actually it's Korean music, and uh, it's it's just like a Korean Korean songs. Yes, there are like Korean groups, boy groups or girl groups, and there are like uh, just sing singer. Yes, singer singers. Yeah, that's it. And what style of music is this? Classical music? Is this? Are these ballads? How would you? What kind of music would you say? Uh, it is? how do you think? Dance. Yeah, music yeah. Usually dance, dance music. Dance Actually, music. it has like ballad music and dance music. A lot of other things like hip hop, R and B. There are a lot. So, but usually, the main, yeah. The main, main concept or main is a performance, and very repetitive. I think K-pop characteristic that is repeat, repetitive lyric and sound and choreograph. Mm -hmm. okay. oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that I'm, is a K-pop characteristic. Lots of choreography, lots of dancing. Speaking of yeah. which, I seem to remember hearing something about a dance demonstration. Is that going to happen? The da dance demo. <laughs> Descriptions? Demonstration. Demonstration. Were you going to do a dance for us? Yeah. So, so we, we yeah, we prepare dance. Yeah. So, are you ready for that? We're ready. So, can we do this? Can we do this now? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. okay. <laughs>
Can you hear the music? Yes, we could, and we could see the dancing. Thank you very much. I hope um, that. Uh... Sorry, that was. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry, that was awkward. I think, but um, yeah, the main point that I want to talk about the cave song is very easy to dance. I mean, to run the music um choreographs is easy. Yeah, how was the feeling though? Yeah, it's pretty fun and uh, choreographs is easy, but. I am not good at do dancing, so it's a pretty little bit hard for me. <laughs> it's very funny. Yeah, but it was fun. Though. It was fun. Yes. How how long did you practice that? How long did you practice it? Um, I I watched this music video alone uh, yesterday and well. I'm I'm not I'm not great to dance. Actually, so. I try to teach her several times, but <laughs> I she's like um, she keeps saying that she cannot dance. But I think it's pretty good. But just we are pretty shy to yeah. the, to the audience. So yeah. I I don't know if I believe you after that performance. You didn't look very shy. <laughs> All right. So tell us, t tell us a little bit more about K-pop. Uh, how long has K-pop been popular? What's the history of it? Anything else you want to tell us? Yeah, we didn't. Uh, yes. Um, the K-pop actually there was a uh, groups who was reading the K-pop uh, to popular. It was 1995. So who's the group though? Group that it, it was Soteji. So there's about hip hop, and then and then 1997 the the idol groups comes comes up the the boy groups names yeah that that was H O T mm -hmm. um, and after 2000 the K pop is starting to popular. Uh, be popular to all of the world yeah, right yes yes and and now it is very popular for everyone like the Donghyun uh, introduced the uh, Hang out, hang out things like soju, the the PSY songs like that, yes. Do you, do you call him PSY or do you call him Psy? Uh, usually I say Psy, but uh, people on the internet they say PSY, so I say yes PSY. But Korean people say Psy. Um, before you mentioned idol groups, what can you tell us about idol groups, boy groups, girl groups? What that's all about? <laughs> okay, so actually there are top three main entertainments, and <clears throat> the first one SM. There are there are three. Uh, the first one SM Entertainment. Um, they are usually around members in their groups, and the their girls generation and EXO are representative groups of SM. So here's are some. Pictures of EXO. Yeah, this group is EXO. They are, they have uh, so many members. These are boy group and this this group is 소녀시대, girls generation. It call, the people called girls generation and these are also have many members. I think that is the point. Uh, the SM entertainment style that makes and the now, now Korea, when you say SM entertainment, this is one particular company, a music production company, right? Yes. And there and are then, how many yeah. big music production companies in Korea? Uh, many entertainment, but the most big company is SM entertainment. And YG Entertainment, and the last one is JYP. Right. So there's really these three major entertainment companies that yes. really produce these kinds of what? Like, how does someone become famous? How does how do these groups become famous in Korea? Um, the YG actually their like style is very uh, free and like punk style so 
uh, there are two main groups, um, 21 and Big Bangs. So here are some pictures of 21. Yeah. As you can see, their outfit is pretty unique and looks nice. And the music also is like hip hop, sometimes like R&B, and pretty dance dance music. And this is back Big Bang, and they also their style also look great. And the final one, what was that? The final JYP. One? Yeah, JYP. Yeah. Uh, uh, there are like Wonder Girls and 2 p.m. And, and here's the Wonder Girls pictures. As you can see, the the style's concept is uh, 14 style. So they are, their music is like 14 style, and they are wearing the same clothes like music. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, are most of these groups are they singers who go sing in bars and try to become famous step by step? Or do these music companies create them and and orchestrate it all? Um, for the beginning, they are playing at the street uh, to be a, a popular. But uh, a, but actually, the big big entertainers they are growing growing up the idol groups um, as a, to be a big star. So when they are pretty young, even they are young, but they are training so hard, practice a lot, so they become a popular musician to the to, uh, all, around, all around the world, or in Korea, yeah. Right. And and I we should also mention that uh, like the big popular music shows here, like American Idol style shows, sometimes involve these music companies, right? Yep. Yeah. Where they are kind of finding people for their company. Um, we have a great question from the chat room. Uh, Gordana asks, do young people in your country listen to traditional music? Mm, yes. Um, actually, the elementary school students, they are listening to the song. But I think they are pretty much they are, uh, li not that like, they their focus is looking their appearance, I think, because they are looking good. And they're, um, the young children are like, like in their like fashions or something like that, not more than music, I think. Yeah, but they are listening to the song. What about you? What about like college age kids? Do you what percentage of the music you listen? To? If I looked at your phone and I wanted to see all the music that you have on your phone, how much of it is K-pop? Oh, every <laughs> I have the K-pop. Yeah, all K-pop. So, yeah. Gordon, I think the answer would be no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, that's that's just song. That's one person. I, mm, I don't know. I think most people your age listen to a lot of K-pop, some international pop, but like, I don't hear a lot of traditional music or old music being heard. Okay. Anyway, please continue. What else do you want to tell us about K-pop? Yeah. Um, also, actually, um, um, there there is a song uh, like there's music uh, called uh, "Throat," but usually the older generation are singing the throat throat songs. So, unfortunately, uh, nowadays throat is not popular for the young generation. So, I feel sad about it. So. Maybe Can we have a short demonstration of throat? Can okay. you sing some throat? <laughs> sing smooth? Okay. Throat? Yeah. Do you know any throat songs? Throat, throat um, um, some singer is Jang Yoon Do you know Jang Yoon who is? She is a very young singer, but she, she uh, a throat singer. Yeah, okay. So okay. What is Every true singers are old guy or old woman, but Jang Yun Jung is uh, focused <laughs> to young generation. Yeah, to can 
contact, yeah, yeah, contact easy, easy easy to young people. Mm -hmm. So and she choose the trot music, and then she actually she truly yeah. very popular yeah, in popular. yeah. No. But I I was told that she got married and she has baby now, right? Really? Yeah. <laughs> she but has no. a baby. Can you talk a little bit about that? You said, oh, but she got married. And when we were yeah. talking about K-pop groups, something that wasn't discussed was the social pressures on these K-pop groups. If you are in a K-pop group, what about your social life? What about your love life? Oh. Mm -hmm. Like either, either group love is very Yes, um, actually, um, their fan is, uh, if the idol groups or the singers uh, have a in relationship, the fan groups are mm -hmm. kind of jealous of them, so um, they, the entertainment them. try to hide it, their like relationship with your loved things, yeah. So. But these days, one of the girl groups, uh, Wonder Girls, uh, remember one of the Wonder Girls member, okay. she married already. So it's very shocked many people. But isn't it okay? But now it's fine. Yeah. Which is kind of shocking that it's shocking. Because there is so much pressure. Part of the image of being a K-pop group is that you are young yeah. and single, and you don't have any. You're innocent, and no boyfriends, girlfriends, and mm. so usually, if they have a relationship, it's totally hidden. If people suspect or find out, that becomes a source of big gossip and almost scandal because they're not supposed to. So that's why I decided not to become a K-pop singer. <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, it is just personal questions, though. Jeff, do you sing a song? No, I, mean, I am I am Umchi, which is okay. Korean for a very <laughs> bad singer. And, and we we should also talk about how Koreans love to sing. Uh, really, one of the most popular forms is to go to a song room like a karaoke style. You all are very comfortable singing. It's really a singing culture. Yeah, actually, when that was yesterday? No, oh, yeah. last Friday. Okay, last Friday, so we went to karaoke, and I was really surprised that all of our classmates can sing a song very well. Yeah. Yes, and we pretty enjoyed that time. Yeah, that was perfect. Yeah. Okay, I, ha I haven't seen any video. I saw some photos. I haven't seen any videos yet. Oh, really? Yeah, you miss it. We should have go together though. Next, maybe we can go together <laughs> next time. Okay, maybe next time. Yeah, we can sing a song, maybe either group songs, right? I <laughs> go. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we we are way past time. Uh, anything else you want to tell us about K-pop? Uh, um, yes. Okay. What, what you want to talk about? Mm -hmm. So okay, uh, I'm gonna ask you one question. Um, why are there like English lyrics in Korean songs? Why like, there are so many English lyrics on in the Korean songs? Um, yeah, uh, because Korean people think that English is looking good comparing to pop music. So and. It also has they think of other countries people too. Yeah. Okay, so you mean mm -hmm. um, to be look good? I mean, listen to good. So they put the English lyrics a lot, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's um, it. At our show, yes. All right. Well, thank you very much for your performance and your information. Uh, we have two segments left now. Uh, Hyomin and Jiyun, I know you have been waiting forever. Uh, Jin Young has is is with us now and has requested to go next. I hope that's okay. You can hang on. Why you hitting me? All right, Jin Young, welcome back. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're going to be talking about? Jin Young, you're uh, somehow. I'm sorry, Jin Young, you're you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? Oh, we're not hearing you.
If there's a microphone on your screen, try to press that. In the Hangout, if you put your mouse on the video, you should see a little microphone. Make sure that's not pressed. All right, Jin Young, still nothing. I think what we're going to do then is uh, send it over to Ji Eun and Hyo Min, and hopefully you can sort out your audio issues. Um, if not, we'll figure something else out. Uh, so if you ever want to test your audio, just say hello, and we'll let you know if the audio is working. OK, good luck, Jin Young. All right, Hyo Min, Ji Eun, you have been waiting for two hours now. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Oh, we waited and, so long. And you've been waiting in the dark. We barely oh, see Oh, no, your... it's not dark. Can you see us now? I see a little bit of a face. Could, now I see another face. And I'm getting a little bit of an echo. Um, echo? Uh, yeah, we don't know about that. Your phone? Uh, your phone. You're, you're using your phone to speak into, right? Yes. With earphones. Are you using it as earphone. a phone? Um, Ah, but and your computer is muted. What about, what about your computer speakers? Are your computer speakers on? That's our mute. The speakers are muted also. Yes. All right. Well, this echo will just add to the scary nature of your topic. Can you please <laughs> introduce yourselves and your topic? Oh, uh, our topic. Because uh, I think we prepared mu much, so... So we will start, okay? Okay. Okay. Hello and welcome to Lights Out Talk Show. We've got lots of chilling stories to discuss and hear your thoughts. I'm your host Jasmine and Amy. Hey Amy, do you believe in ghosts or supernatural phenomenon? Uh, yes, actually I do believe in ghosts. And some people will say there's no ghost, but I believe. <laughs> what do you think about this? Does anyone believe in ghosts? Like, can anyone tell us about your opinions? Anyone? Well, we're down to <laughs> Jin Young, whose microphone isn't working. Oh, Dong Hyun's still there and muted. Bad. Dong Hyun can chime in. Uh, I can tell you my opinion. I have never personally experienced a ghost. Uh, I have experienced or heard about some things that cannot be explained by science, so I'm not definitely one way or the other. Do you have any personal first-hand experiences with ghosts? Yes, lots of experience, actually. <laughs> Please tell uh, us about it. Oh, but before we do that, uh, I was Googling about the ghost, and I found out some videos. Uh, a guy named Steve uh, made a uh, website called Half Paranormal, and he uploads videos like which uh, he found the haunted house or places. So trying to you know communicate with them. You want to watch? No. <laughs> no? Why? <are> you? <laughs> well, th this is the Huff. This is the Huff Paranormal video. Yes. Well, what, uh, un, it's twenty. It's twenty-five minutes long, <laughs> and no, it it's doesn't. No, we, we're just gonna say maybe, maybe minutes. But it's okay. I'll just tell them. Um, okay, great. They using a tool like EVP or EMF. Do you know what that means? Uh, tell me what yeah. that means. Uh, oh, EM. So. Oh no! Oh, EMF is, uh, stands for electromotive force. Uh, I think it just means a ghost detector. Okay, so it's and detecting some kind of energy yes. that's associated with yeah, ghosts. Yeah, energy. Yes, with electronic. Um, but the EVP is, stands for electronic voice feminine, uh, phenomenon. Like this is amplified like sounds by magnetism. And remove static like noise and recording 
spirit voices. Because I heard, because uh, I watched the video, it really freaks me out. It's really scary. And how certain are you that this video is not altered? That that's telling you the real whole truth and not, you know, some trick photography? Yeah, maybe, maybe it's fake, but it's still scary. As they doing recording at night. And uh, in a dark very, room. Yeah. With no light. Oh, oh, it was really scary. All right. Uh, I'm I'm curious about if I want you to talk about what you want to talk about, but I'm curious about Koreans' feelings about ghosts. Anything special about Korean attitudes or beliefs about ghosts? Uh, uh, uh like like in most Western culture, they have an exorcist, right? Exorcist. Yes. Yes. Exorcist. But in Korea, like we have a Korean shaman, like Mudang. <laughs> I think most people believe in. I don't know if believe in Mudang. <laughs> um, so last. Why, why are you laughing? Some Mudangs are really real, and some Mudangs are fake. But it's really <laughs> surprising. Would they be called, and what would they do? Oh, no, they they cast out demons. Maybe when some people are possessed, or and their duty is to send evil spirits away. It mostly, uh, they tell fortune and. Pray to their gods. Now, sometimes I will see a Korean exorcist outside of a house or a building, uh, kind of dancing and chanting. Uh, I just want to check with Jin Young. Was that you saying hello, Jin Young? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we do have your audio. Yes, mission accomplished. It must have been a ghost that was troubling your audio. All right, please continue, ladies. Uh, Jiyeon and Hyomin, please continue. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, but, but I want to talk about my experience. Please. Oh, uh, because, uh, no, it's my, actually, my, I'm going to talk to my mother. Uh, uh, we lived in old apartment. I think it was kind of cursed building. It was quite old building, so it's weird thing was happen, and like bad things happen in that house in the apartment. So our family decided to move. Then we got all unpacked our new home, and it was about to sun down. And my mother went to my room and praying. And suddenly she felt something um, from the window. It was black shape with red eyes watching over my mother and saying, I came again. Saying, I with, came again? Came again. Like they were following. When we moved to another house, they were actually following us. They said, I came again. But, with teasing sound boys. So when I as soon as I heard that story, I was so horrified and I couldn't go to my room for a while. It was so scary. So that was your mother who experienced that. Did you ever experience yes, that? Yes, I had a lot. And can you move your head we can barely see your, your face. Can okay. You get closer. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh, I had I had a lot of experience actually. Uh, you know, having nightmares like Kawi, you know, you know what they mean? Uh, it's Korean for ghost, yeah. isn't it? Yes. It's, you, I had a not nightmare and I can't move my body. Uh, I had that a lot, like every night since when I was five with having a nightmare and I know that 
when when I get to my room and I and I see my bedroom and I just knew that oh I think I'm gonna have have a nightmare and something is pressure on top of me and I couldn't sleep that night like every night I can't I couldn't sleep at all and I hear some voices and I saw the shadow watching me it's really scary it was this in your youth or still these days um, not these day, but maybe till till three years ago. How did it stop? Why did it stop? I don't know. Maybe I don't scare much anymore. <laughs> no, I was like in New Zealand. I was uh, I didn't like the one room, and so I didn't want to go near that, but. One day I I was so tired and I want to go to sleep and my room was very messy so I had to go there <laughs> so and I I just lie down and trying to sleep and I hear I heard three voices in the air I couldn't see them were just voices and they one of one of that spirit thing I don't know they saying to me. Uh, pressure on me, just stand on top of her and I actually they stood on me and I just I don't know I just I yeah I fought that and so, then so yeah. you've had a lot of experiences what about uh, you Jian? Uh, I <laughs> not as much as this me but um, when I was about seven years old, I had to be alone at home many times because uh, my grandparents and parents had to work. So uh, I hid myself with a blanket. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and one day when when I was lying on a bed, I heard voices that sounds like my mom. And she said, come here. And I was really shocked and just watched a door. And the voice <laughs> said to me again, come here, Jin. It's It's your mother. So I went to the bathroom to look for my mother, but she wasn't there. And and the voice said to me, "No, not there. <laughs> I'm in the living room." So I was. Uh, I at the time I didn't scared because. Maybe I was young and I went to the living room and you know there was not nobody. So mm, I really <laughs> got shocked. Mm, I think yeah, she always been in staying in corner and waiting for me <laughs> <laughs> to come to school. Um, all right. Anything else you want to talk about related to ghosts, either personal experiences or Korean ghosts or anything else? Uh, not really. I do. No. And because right. we prepared three videos and there are no time. Well, please put the I put a link to one of the videos in the chat room. Please add the links to the other ones, but we can watch videos anytime. We only get to yeah. talk to you on this rare special time. Yes. <laughs> but I <laughs> thank you, thank you for sharing your ghost stories. I hope you have a safe, non-scary night. You can turn the lights on now if you want, <laughs> and you're welcome to stick with us for our final segment. Jin Young. Ah, uh, uh, uh. 
Can you hear me? Yes, we see you, we hear you. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and what your topic is? Uh, hi, my name is Jin Young, and we're here to talk about do and don'ts of healthy eating. All right. Uh, I just want to let you know your audio is kind of low. Anything you can do to speak loud. You're speaking, you're using a computer? No. You're using your phone? Yeah. Okay. I'm using okay, yeah. the computer now, but it's not working. The mic okay. is not working, so I connect other earphones. Okay, we'll take what we can get. Uh, just speak as loudly as you can. Uh, all right, so what are some do's and don'ts of eating smart? Uh, recently, people suffer from diabetes and disease related to uh, bad eating habits. Some people know about uh, what to eat and what is healthy, but they don't want to change their healthy um, food habits. And some people doesn't even know about it. Many girls who want to lose weight just they just don't eat it. Eating <laughs> they just cut eating. I'm not tell you um, to cut carbs or counting calories. I have not counted calories since three years ago, and it doesn't really affect your diet. Um, food is not enemy. Food can be your best friend, boosting your uh, boosting your fatness hormones and enhancing your energy. I'll talk about foods you should avoid. Uh, avoid, don't. <laughs> uh, I suggest do. Um, First of all, I want to talk about orange juice. Orange juice is very, very processed and pasteurized, and it's not natural. What about different kinds of orange juice? You know, you go to buy orange juice, and you've got a lot of different choices. Yeah. Some taste like sugar water. Some say 100% natural orange yeah. juice. Yeah. But most of orange juice, and I mean typical orange juice you can get in supermarket. There are um, many kinds of oranges right now. They say 100% natural, and I know uh, I forgot the name. Uh, like Tropicana or Minute Maid. Yeah, yeah. Most of those kinds of oranges is processed a lot. Um, uh, it contains much sugar in it. It will raise your insulin high. Insulin can actually be fat storing hormone, so it is not good for your health. Um, what you can replace instead of artificial flavored juice. You can just eat the fruit, orange, and it will actually help you much better. You can get vitamin, you can get many nutrients. And you just put vinegar on water, or honey, or make your own smoothie, you will much, much healthier. Vinegar and water? Yeah, some kind of fruit vinegar. So what do you drink in the morning? I made uh, own vinegar. What is it? Um, this. It's apple vinegar. I put apple in it and I fermented it. It tastes kind of strong, but it's really refreshing. So I'm sorry, you put a real apple? Yeah, apple, diced in, apple. Diced apple in water or in vinegar? In vinegar. Okay, what kind of vinegar? It's just, you can get... Just regular vinegar. Get supermarket. How long do you leave it in there? About two weeks, I think. Two weeks? I don't remember exactly. 
And what are the benefits of this? Uh, it makes your skin better and it gives you um, energy and fiber and I think it's uh, good for your stomach also. Vinegar is acid but it turns into alcoholic. Yeah. Ar alcoholic? I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, alkaline? Yeah, yeah, alkaline. Okay. So it's, okay. It is good for your health. And the next thing is vitamin water. Don't drink vitamin water. It also contains lots of sugar. Just if you can, take vitamin and drink water or tea is better option. And soda is I'm very much against soda. As it, it is, I think, chemical soup is too much for your liver health, not good for losing weight. Just replace with mineral water or just water. What about diet soda? Diet soda is also contain lots of sugar, as far as I know. I saw a website, Sugar Stack. I'll put the link on it later. Uh, are you sure it contains sugar? Doesn't it contain artificial sweetener? Uh, artificial sweetener also. Right. But the side has picture of sugar even if it's diet coke. Hmm. My understanding that there's no sugar in diet sodas but that the artificial sweeteners are bad for you in a different way. They trick your body into thinking it's still hungry. But anyway, please continue. Uh, yeah, instead of sugar, it's probably harmful or even worse than sugar. They, they put in like that. Molitol, sucralose, sobitur, and aspartame. Kind of like that. And by the way, I want you to let you know Maha in Egypt says her doctor says the same thing about vinegar. So I guess this is an international health strategy. Yeah. Um, especially if you want to lose body fat, uh, don't don't drink diet soda or vitamin water. Just drink water. It's way better way. Um, okay. Yeah. And energy drink. Energy drink. Once you taste it, you just know that it's not good for your health. It tastes so strong, and it contains really a lot of caffeine. So, um, caffeine level is too high. It's not good for your health. And by energy drinks, we mean things like Red Bull or what's the popular brand in Korea? Uh, Red Bull and Monster. And these have lots of sugar, lots of caffeine, yes. lots of artificial ingredients. So do, do you ever drink those? I drink it once and it tastes so bad and I think it's, I can feel it. It is not good for my health. So what about your, your friends and classmates at university? Do, do a lot of people drink energy drinks? Yes. Especially this week? Yeah, this is final term. So lots of students trying to wake up to drink that. I think it's not good. Just take small nap and then go back to studying. It's Any food that you suggest instead of an energy drink? Yeah, I... This is tea, mate tea. And it is also contain caffeine, but it's good, smoothly... Um, increase your caffeine, so it really helps you like a healthy way to wake up. And I love oolong tea. I bought it in Taiwan, and um, lots of tea, like black tea, green tea, also have caffeine in it, so you can replace with that. Um, also, it has detox. Detox properties? Yeah, it, it helps you detox your body. So, tea is 
my alternative to energy drink. And I'll talk about flavor yogurt. And I know you, you'll be like, what? Well, yogurt is good, but it is full of sugar and corn syrup and food coloring and artificial flavors. I could go on and on. It's, it's really not good for your health. Um, since I love yogurt, my mom making homemade yogurt right, right here. Uh, this case is male yogurt product in Korea, and they sell great yogurt like this size. So you can have with your family. It's really good for. Uh, and I'm sorry, you said male yogurt, not male yogurt, right? Not male and female yogurt. <laughs> May il. May il, uh, okay. Yeah, company's name. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, wow, I, I don't really understand yogurt. I didn't, I didn't know about male and female yogurt. I'm not trying to advertise it, but it is really good. And I'm using it for a container for homemade yogurt. And you can put... Um, hello. I, I can... I can hear you. Are you talking? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I was asking, how do you make homemade yogurt? Uh, there's a specific machine in my house. It's like fermenting uh, pooper. <laughs> fermenting what? Pooper? <laughs> pooper. Cooker, cooker, fermented. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long show. Uh, <laughs> okay, and so you have a fermentation machine. Yeah, you can get uh, the actual germ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and put it in your milk and take, it takes time to ferment. Yeah, I've read that. You can get sort of yeah. the, the natural yeast and, and milk and let yeah, it take care of it. You can also uh, kind of feed it with, like, if you get that male yogurt, the plain yogurt, yeah. you can actually mix that in with just milk and you yeah. keep using that, and I, I understand yeah. that works as well. Yeah, yeah. My mom usually using that way. Um, All right, what else do you want to share with us? I, I'm not finished with yogurt. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Culture flavor yogurt and make your own flavor yogurt by adding real fruit. You can add frozen frozen blueberry and raspberry, lots of kind of fruits. And put I usually put a nectar Yeah, into to make it sweet. And it's really healthy way, I think. And that agave nectar looks very familiar. I think I got that same one on iHerb. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm a big fan of iHerb. You already know, right? Yeah, I do. Um, I wanted to ask you also about your feelings of about pot bingsu. We were talking pot about bingsu. pot bingsu earlier during our dessert section. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel nutritionally and personally about pot bingsu? Uh, pot bingsu, some kind of pot bingsu has real fruit. And um, lots of ingredients, which is, I think it's good for health. But sometimes it's too sweet when you eat too much. So I keep it in a cheap meal, like once in a week or twice in a um, month, I think. But in summer, I, I really can't help eating that. <laughs> Bingsu is, I think, it's good, better than ice cream. Yes, I seem to recall you enjoyed pot bingsu very much. <laughs> yeah, and last thing is low calorie pack, like 100 calories pack cookie, and they say it's sugar free, but they might replace to artificial sweeteners, like I mentioned before. Uh, instead of sugar, equally harmful or even worse than sugar. Uh, try to avoid that. And I want to talk about 
uh, please don't count calories. Don't yeah. count calories. Why not? Yeah. You have to care about the quality, not quantity. Uh, check your nutritional facts and what's in it. That is important. Um, way better than calorie, I think. Um, you're um, consider that you um, you have to your body requires calories. If you eat healthy food like sweet potato or a piece of meat, uh, it will take more calorie to absorb and digest in your body. You can burn up uh, your calorie thirty percent by eating something like high fiber and high protein food. When you eat processed things, it just digests easily and increase your insulin. So healthy food, even if it's higher calorie than um, supermarket cookies and lots of sweet things, healthy food is more important, I think. Um, my recommendation, uh, some health food is, this is chia seed. And it will, I searched it, <laughs> uh, beneficial, oh, was it benefits of spirit on the chia seed. Um, it has huge nutritional profile, omega-3, calcium, magnesium, manganese, and it really helps um, diabetes, fight belly fat, stronger teeth, um, protein, get full easily. Does it have omega-3? Yeah, it contains omega-3. And there is uh, omega-3 that I'm taking right now. <laughs> it's really good to have uh, some important supplements. And the other thing is um, whey protein. I I usually pack it in my house, protein the protein shake, and Why? drink it in school. What are the health benefits? Um, it, it gives you protein and power, and it can replace with junk food. <laughs> you can easily access in the um, convenience store. And try to eat veggies and fruits a lot. You can you can get bananas and apples in the convenience store in school. So ah, and eggs, boiled eggs is really good snack. Um and I try to cut down my uh bad habits, like eating wheat a lot, gluten a lot. I had trouble. I had gastritis before, and it, it doesn't, my body doesn't digest food well when I eat much wheat. So I try to change it. Gastritis is my motivation for changing. Has it yeah. has it worked? Yeah, yeah. I try and, to replace with rice. And I have one more question for you, but we have a question from the chat room from Maha. Are Koreans, and especially young Koreans, health conscious? Health conscious? Are they concerned about their health? Are they very aware of the quality of what they eat and everything? Uh, recently, many young people uh, trying to change their diet habit because of losing weight. They want bikini and they want abs, but they I don't think they do it in the right way. They just quit eating. They just um, many facts like I mentioned before. They replace with um, 
right little yogurt they think it's good and some diet soda they think it's good but most of my friends I think concerned about health yeah it's kind of an interesting mix I mean I think traditionally Koreans are very concerned about health and they're very aware of the health qualities of different foods uh, but I think modern Korean life there's a lot of processed food there's Koreans consume more salt than any people in the world yeah. and part of it's from from a lot of fermentation from kimchi and things like that mm -hmm. but also from things like uh, ramen or the ra the instant noodles that are eaten a lot and uh, some of the processed foods and chips like seogang um, and I just wanted to mention to Gordana in the chat room, those cherries look very good. I like sour things. I'm going to check those out. Thank you for sharing that link. And so my question for you, Jin Young, is okay. you seem to have lots of wisdom about do's and don'ts and making smart choices and eating well. How much do you practice what you preach? How much do you walk the talk and follow your own advice? Uh... You mean how long? Is how much? Like, do you are you pretty good? You you s said do this, don't do that. How much do you do that and don't do that? Do you I follow your own advice? Any of these, uh, don't do yogurt, fl flavor yogurt, and orange juice, energy drink. I don't drink Coke a lot. Sometimes I drink. Uh, I switch it when I when I have to drink something alcohol. And when I you have to necessarily <laughs> drink that. I drink cider Sprite sometimes, but it's like once in a month or twice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything else to share? Mm. I've got lots of things. Oh, you can eat sweet potato. <laughs> that's a wait. Is that a baked potato or a sweet? That's sweet potato. Yes. Sweet potato. Yes, yes. And boil it, sweet potato, and pack it and pack it to school. And I drink soy milk also. Soy milk. <laughs> um, yeah. Ah, oh, I wanted to say about spirulina. Okay. I I run out of spirulina, so I had to order it again. But I really want to share what what is the benefits of spirulina. Spirulina is blue algae, blue green algae. Oh, do you have? Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's one of superfoods, and it has protein, vitamin D, iron. It's uh, it really helps weight loss and diabetes, uh, stress, fatigue, depression, PMS. I can <laughs> I can go on and on. And blue green algae is some people algae 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 is what I'm talking about. It's not company's name. Uh, it's plant like organism in seawater. And and it really hard to hard to um, eat something like that in your um, life. Although I mean, it, it comes as like capsules or yeah. Although I also wonder, like Koreans eat a lot of seaweed, and I feel like seaweed is has a lot of the similar health benefits to spirulina. I mean, it's a great source of iron and a lot of minerals. It has really a lot of salt. So well, it, it 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 well, it depends how you get it. If you get it dried and salted, yeah, yeah it's yeah, that one salty. Is good. It tastes good, but it's salty. <laughs> yeah, but if you take spirulina, I think. In my opinion, in my experience, I think it, it was good so far. So I highly recommend it. And like, I do you take it in capsule form, or do you eat like the I, not not the uh, algae? Like, yeah, yeah, algae mm. itself. All right, all right, Jin Young. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us tonight. 
Uh, and thanks to all of your classmates uh, at the university who shared their segments and are no longer with us. Thank you especially uh, to Maha and Gordana are still with us and uh, Elizabeth Thank Ann you. joined us and people from around the world who tuned into our talk show. I really do appreciate it. Uh, we are going to do this again in three nights on Wednesday night. Uh, thank you also uh, others who were in the chat room uh, and we'll look forward to continuing next time. Bye.